good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for uh, having me here today. Uh, ben asked me to do this talk uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago uh, and talk about some of the blasting projects that we've been doing at JK Tech. So I had to put together a, a title, so I said like, uh, blasting for increment and productivity. And then uh, what I'll do in this presentation is basically go through uh, a few case studies and then talk about some of the work that we've been doing in the past at JK Tech. So productivity, uh, especially in mining, was a, a, a a buzzword uh, at least a few years ago uh, during the, uh, the downturn. But what it basically means is uh, whatever you're measuring uh, the ratio of uh, your output or whatever inputs you're putting into it. So uh, uh, GDP uh, per hour, if you're looking at an industry in total, or uh, if you're looking at uh, some sort of a production, then so basically looking at value or uh, throughput. So I was curious as to what uh, the interest in uh, productivity uh, in mining uh, was like. They always had this uh, notion that uh, with the, uh, uh, the changes in the industry itself, there's uh, more interest in productivity during the down times than uh, the boom times. So I looked through Google, and this was the sort of uh, trend that I found. Looks like there's uh, a peak or uh, in the search for mining uh, uh, recently. It probably might uh, have something to do with uh, the Bitcoin mining or uh, just mining in general. I'm not sure. It probably might be throwing in everything. but. Uh, Productivity in general, it just seems to be uh, going a little uh, this is low. And then, just for uh, uh, comparison's sake, if you throw iPhone in, it looks like every time a new version of the iPhone comes in, like uh, there's uh, a lot of interest in it. And if you actually compare that with the interest in mining or the search results going there, it's fairly low. So. Uh, but yeah, uh, not to doubt it from the topic. Uh, for today, I'll just focus on uh, improvement in throughput and value uh, added in terms of the uh, productivity. And for this, I'll use three examples from uh, different projects and uh, different work uh, that we've done over the years. And one will be uh, looking at value added through a traditional mind ML optimization project, and one uh, looking at application of mind ML philosophy to uh, a greenfield project. And then uh, the third case study is a hypothetical case study that we worked on a few years ago, basically bringing the whole thing together in uh, a mind planning and optimization approach. So in the first case, uh, what we had there was a, a, a gold mine, and they were using five meter benches. And uh, and what we did in that scenario was uh, basically uh, move to uh, a larger bench and uh, use higher part of factors uh, and change the uh, the size distribution uh, from blasting. And when we campaigned the material from the baseline, which was uh, the smaller benches, uh, we had about uh, 300 tons per hour uh, from the mine. And uh, for the validation, uh, we had a significant improvement in throughput. And when we looked at what actually contributed to all of that improvement, uh, we made changes to blasting, and there were other changes made uh, in the mill itself. So it was basically uh, uh, integrated uh, optimization uh, looking at both the mine and the mill. And uh, 
I actually looked at it like uh, uh, because of the significant increase in uh, blasting energy, we uh, contributed about uh, almost 20% uh, was attributed to the preconditioning of the road in that particular scenario. But basically, uh, uh, what we've done in this case is uh, looking at the uh, traditional marginal approach uh, where we increase. Uh, 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 blasting energy and then uh, make some changes in the middle and uh, we get a significant increase in throughput. And the second case is uh, where we looked at applying the traditional mine to mill approach to a greenfield project because uh, what we see in the industry uh, is using uh, point values uh, to develop uh, uh, mill designs or uh, plant designs, and what we generally use is uh, ore hardness values, a single value like a, a, a feed size, uh, uh, eighty percent passing, and the product uh, eighty percent uh, uh, size, and the machine operating parameters, and we just go about designing a, a, a plant about that, and with that approach we don't take into consideration the in-situ hardness the structure the blast design and uh, uh yeah uh, uh, basically uh don't take into consideration the uh, the variability uh in the rock mass and uh we also uh, do not take into consideration any uh changes to the blast uh that uh has an impact on the feed size so this is what we'd normally do. And in this uh, approach, what we went for is taking into consideration the variability uh, in the rock mass and putting that through uh, a stochastic fragmentation model, which would end up giving an envelope of results rather than uh, the single values. And So uh, for this uh, stochastic approach, what we did, uh, we used the uh, traditional uh, the JKMRC, uh, the crush zone model, uh, and the input were uh, properties, uh, uh, the raw properties from, uh, sorry, uh, the raw properties from each of the ore domains in the ore body. And then uh, we had an envelope uh, of properties uh, or uh, probabilities for the size distribution rather than a single size distribution. And we'll put those uh, uh, envelope of size distributions into the uh, JK SIMMET model and uh, using the variability uh, in those properties, we ended up uh, getting uh, a throughput for each of the, uh, uh, the probability estimates. So I applied that uh, over four or domains, uh, which is a, a standard uh, SABC circuit. And we looked at the impact of three different blast designs on the impact and throughput. And uh, the main objective there was to uh, look at uh, evaluating the risk of uh, not achieving the nameplate throughput. Uh, for each of the old domains using the standard practices and if we could make any changes to blast design to see if we can make any improvement uh, in the current stages and uh, for this uh, particular case what we had was uh, we had uh, information from a previous study that was done uh, using the seat methodology so we had the seat curves that we were comparing our size distributions against and uh, basically looking at the throughput and the PAT. So for the four O domains, these were the input values that we had. Uh, uh, fracture frequency, uh, which we uh, end up using in the uh, fragmentation model as, uh, as a representation of the, uh, uh, the institute block size or the structure in the row and uh, rock density and we had uh, uh, a times b values uh, and point load uh, 
is an indication of uh, rock hardness. So this is what we would normally do, uh, generate a size distribution for uh, uh, a particular type of rock and then put that through uh, uh, a crushing model or uh, uh, a circuit model and then basically uh, design a circuit for that. But because of the variation in the rock mass itself, uh, depending on what you look at, you probably might be within that range somewhere, depending on uh, where you're in the ore body and then depending on the variability. So in this particular case, what we looked at is just the, uh, the 10th, 20th, 80th, and the 90th versatile size distributions as generated uh, by the stochastic fragmentation model for each of the ore domains. And we basically did that for three different blast designs. So one is using standard powder factors uh, that's used in the industry and increasing that powder factor to uh, about uh, 1.2 uh, kilogram per BCM, uh, which is uh, standard mine to mill practice. And then uh, looking at very high energy uh, uh, blast. So this is a comparison of the crusher product uh, generated by uh, uh, the seed methodology because the seed uh, curves, they generally use a single size distribution and then uh, design the, uh, uh, the plant based on uh, the hardness values. And uh, as you see, uh, the both size distributions for the standard blast and the uh, high energy blast uh, do the same size distribution because uh, there's no method uh, in C to actually uh, change that size distribution. You use uh, a single size distribution and assume that uh, everything remains the same over the life of the mine. They don't take into consideration the changes to uh, in the blast design or anything like that. So uh, when we put our uh, PSD estimate on that curve, uh, we estimated that using an industry standard blast, like uh, you produce a coarser size distribution, and uh, with the high energy blast, you end up producing a very finer size distribution. So, if you end up using these values, you get uh, completely uh, different results uh, size of your mill. So, uh, similar uh, case for uh, a different ore domain. Uh, this one actually uh, ends up producing uh, a coarser size distribution, even with the uh, the high energy blast, which matches up close to the uh, uh, the seed curves. And for this scenario, what we were looking at is trying to compare uh, whether each of these ore domains, using the standard blasting practices, would they achieve the main pit throughput, which was uh, set to about uh, 80,000 tons per day. And what we see here is, if you're looking at the, uh, the average, or the, uh, the 50th percentile, uh, there's a, uh, uh, this uh, O domain one and two, they exceed, uh, they meet the, uh, uh, the throughput uh, target, but O domain three and four, they don't meet that target. But if you increase that uh, blast intensity, you basically uh, end up pushing uh, over domain three over the limit or uh, over the line. Uh, but you still have to do some other changes uh, to the over domain four uh, to be able to, uh, or actually, uh, still come short of meeting the uh, uh, the target throughput. And similarly uh, for the, uh, the target grind size, because we're uh, producing a lot more uh, throughput on uh, the first two ore domains. We're producing a, a coarser size distribution or uh, 
kosher particle uh, or kosher product, which basically, uh, uh, if you start linking that to uh, recovery, uh, you end up uh, losing uh, metal. So, what we did in that case is basically uh, looking at uh, the variability uh, in the rock mass and uh, try to look at different strategies uh, to mitigate uh, whatever uh, uh, throughput losses that you'll end up getting by using uh, different blast designs. And this case study that I'm going to look at is to basically use the, uh, 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 the concept of having different ore properties and variability in the rock mass uh, and trying to look at optimizing it uh, for the life of mine. And uh, what we ended up generating is a simple uh, block model trying to represent uh, a copper uh, or a porphyry uh, uh, ore body uh, with a very uh, hard uh, zone at the bottom, uh, a transition zone in the middle, and then a slightly altered uh, rock on the uh, periphery, and uh, an oxide cap at the top. And uh, assign uh, simple uh, slope design uh, values. So, uh, total uh, slope angle of 38 degrees in this uh, particular case. And then uh, using uh, similar conditions to uh, the previous case that I was talking about. So, a uh, simple uh, SADC circuit, uh, a single sag mill, two ball mills, and uh, uh, pebble crushers. And uh, what we're basically uh, uh, doing here is uh, based on the, uh, the variability uh, in the grade uh, within uh, the entire ore body. Uh, here, uh, what we have is uh, on average, uh, the altered zone is uh, slightly uh, lower grade compared to the oxide and uh, higher grade going to the bottom. And uh, we applied uh, a traditional uh, Lurch Grossman uh, algorithm to uh, maximize the uh, NPV and then look at calculating the, uh, the ultimate fit. And using the different percentiles for hardness for each of the rock types, uh, we ended up calculating a, a, a throughput uh, for that. And uh, we assume that uh, this variation in throughput had an impact on the processing cost. So, and, uh, and we basically uh, looked at using those uh, varied uh, processing costs on uh, different uh, scenarios to be able to uh, basically uh, optimize uh, uh, the entire uh, mine or the core body. <coughs> So uh, a quick summary of what we had in that block model. Uh, so uh, the hard uh, zone at the bottom, uh, lower tonnage, higher grade, uh, the porphyry uh, uh, zone around it, and then the, uh, the oxide material, and the, uh, the low grade material uh, outside. And uh, based on the distribution, what we looked at is the different percentile values uh, for uh, the ore hardness, the A times V values uh, uh, for each of the ore domains. And uh, we had an estimate of what the throughput would look like from our simulations. And based on that, we ended up calculating the, uh, the processing cost, uh, which, uh, which would be a uh, I mean, uh, if you uh, if you wanted to uh, go with a higher level of confidence, you'd have a higher processing cost, and then uh, the lower level of confidence, uh, it'd be uh, lower. And uh, similarly, uh, we also compared that 
with increasing the blasting intensity and the impact that would have on processing. So you'd have a higher uh, uh, operating cost uh, on your mining side, but uh, that would end up uh, reducing your processing costs uh, uh, because of the, uh, uh, the final size distributions generated. And what we had uh, as an ultimate uh, a bit out of the, uh, the base case using these values uh, is uh, a bit that would go uh, just to the, uh, the top of that uh, hard zone at the bottom and then generating uh, an NPV of close to about 300 million for a, a 21 year mine log. But if you looked at the same thing uh, at different confidence levels, what we see here is uh, using the 90th uh, uh, percentile values, we basically uh, end up getting uh, a smaller pit or a smaller uh, ultimate pit. And uh, you reduce your confidence level and then it goes deeper which again has a significant impact on the NPV uh, of that pit as well. So increase your confidence level and then uh, your NPV basically uh, uh, goes negative uh, 600 million and and the confidence, uh, uh, if you reduce your confidence levels, your NPV uh, uh, goes up significantly higher. And we've done similar thing uh, using uh, the mine to mill uh, blast design, going through the mill and uh, what we end up getting is uh, a similar mine dark, not a, a extensive, uh, because for the base case we had about 21 years and this one goes down to about 20 years, but a significant improvement in the NPV. And similarly with the, uh, the high energy blast designs, uh, because your mining uh, uh, rate remains about the same, but you're processing your material faster, you end up reducing your mine life uh, 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 from 21 to uh, 18 years, and the NPV uh, shoots up to uh, 727 uh, million in this case. Okay, trying to compare all of that uh, together. So uh, what we are uh, basically looking at is uh, on the base case we're about uh, 300 million uh, on the NPV scale and uh, depending on uh, your risk appetite if you go to the investors with that number uh, it probably uh, might get uh, investment or not. And then, if you increase your level of conf or uh, uh, level of confidence, and then uh, your NPV goes negative, so it'd be uh, hard to find uh, investment for a, a project uh, uh, like that. But taking it from the base case and then looking at different blasting strategies, what we see here is a significant increase in the value of the project itself. i actually uh, leave that slide there. And the reason I wanted to put it up there is we don't do these sort of integrated scenarios and look at adding value over the life of mine upfront much. And that's something uh, that I see uh, has been missing in many of the projects, which gen generally tend to use uh, traditional approaches uh, point values, design a plan, and then uh, multiple cases where you won't uh, hit your uh, nameplate throughputs and then you end up uh, getting into a scenario where changes need to be made after the design has been done. So what we really need to do is look at all of these approaches up front at a pre-feasibility stage and look at uh, 
what the value is uh, that can be added to the projects using different technical solutions uh, that are available to us and uh, use that to uh, basically uh, uh, add value to the projects. Sure, I ran through it and then yeah, uh, uh, I came to the end of my slide. So I'll leave you there uh, with that and uh, let you ask any questions. Or Thanks, Anand. Um, nice. Please, you can come with questions. Sure.